it's not on. I do know this, and that is that um, uh, people aren't doing this <laughs> a lot, very well in our world. They never really have done this very well. I mean, some better than others, and different times maybe better than others, but really, the world that we're in right now is a result of not listening to what Jesus commanded to be the greatest commandment. So we need to take it seriously. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. This was how John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, summed up the gospel as well. And John Wesley had three rules uh, that uh, in, they're in our book of discipline and that sort of thing, but they, some, it's, they, these three rules are summed up this way these days. Um, he says, um, do no harm. That's the number one uh, summation. Do no harm. Um, do all the good you can, everywhere you can, anytime you can, any way you can. And he, he goes on and on with that just a little bit. So do good, all the good you can, do no harm, and stay in love with God. Now, the way John Wesley uh, brought that out was he said, uh, depend upon the ordinances of the church. Well, what are the ordinances of the church? Well, and so what he meant was we... we, we uh, uh, we stay in love with God by prayer and by, um, by coming, you know, worship, prayer, Holy Communion, all of these things that we do, um, these are all spiritual things that we need, and these are ways that we access God, these are ways that we uh, worship God. So that's why uh, this commandment is so important. Um, and and uh, Jesus said it was the highest one. Uh, now, I'm not suggesting this because I've done this way too much, but I know some people are doing this, and I would just say we all need to stop, but I'm talking about scrolling Facebook, especially right now or any other social media. Uh, it, it's just the only thing that, that I would say that you could see right now is proof that um, a lot of people are not following, <laughs> not following the uh, love of the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. All right, so Jesus gave this commandment um, in Mark 12 as the highest recognition, which sets us apart. Of the two commandments, uh, hang on the, these two commandments, as Jesus said, hang all of the law of the prophets. So it's not about the law, right? Yet, we still will find people saying, you've got to follow those ten commandments. Well, yeah, those were important. Those are for the... Uh, those are, were for Israel, and, and today we still do follow them. But Jesus uh, clarified them a little more, and he said, At, you have heard this, I tell you. And he said that a lot on his uh, uh, ser on Sermon on the Mount. And he said, uh, this sums up the law and the prophets. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and love your neighbors yourself. Um, so whenever, whatever you want people to do, uh, I've always heard it this way. I grew up with the golden rule. It was called the golden rule. And um, it is essentially, and I know we read it on there, but I've always, I've grown up with and, and heard it and thought of it as, do unto others, there's the King James in me, right? The King James uh, version. Do unto others or do to others as you would have others do to you. All right? So what does that mean? Well, for one thing, it's not all about us, <laughs> okay? It's about God, and first thing is that we love God, but how do we love God practically? If love is a verb, we love God by loving our neighbors, and it goes back and forth. When we love our neighbors, we're showing the love of God, okay? So how could the commandment uh, of love the Lord your God uh, and, and with all your soul, strength, and mind, and your neighbors yourself, and the golden rule, how can those possibly be linked together and important to us? Well, one part uh, in Isaiah 45, uh, 18, it says that God formed planet Earth to be inhabited with people, right? Uh, but now, with the squabbling and all the, the hateful rhetoric we see toward each other today, but rather, Jesus taught 
uh, us for, uh, taught us to pray for a time when God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven, right? That means what? What does that mean? It means peace. It means respect. It means real love. He is searching uh, for hearts that yearn for that. And, and, and where, where love for God impels us, compels us to love and treat others in that loving way. No greater leader ever expected and required more of his followers than Jesus. Now, I suppose um, someone could treat some people as they would want to be treated without loving God. Um, But I'm not going to get into the psychology of that. Uh, But you cannot love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and all of that, and not love others as you love yourself. The love of God alone gives us that kind of love for others. That kind of love that he puts in our heart, it changes us. It makes us uh, orientate towards something completely different in our lives and and, and the things of God. A lawyer questioned Jesus in uh, Luke 12 about um, who was to be, you remember this, who is my neighbor? That was the question that was asked, right? Who is my neighbor? Well, then Jesus told a story about a man who was attacked by criminals and they're going down this this, road. uh, shady road, this uh, sketchy road, if you will, in, in Jerusalem and Jericho, and uh, people just normally didn't go down that road. But uh, these, these criminals, they uh, stripped him of his belongings, beat him, uh, and, and left him for dead. Well, a priest, or it says in some places a Levite, in other words, a priest uh, in the temple, a Jewish priest in the Jewish temple at the time, uh, saw this man, and he passed by, and he didn't offer any help. Uh, so why in the world would Jesus have a leader in, the, in, in, in that situation not help someone? Well, Jesus doesn't explain, and he expects us to figure it out. But then Jesus has another person come along in his story uh, that those um, religious leaders at the time uh, had priorities that were completely different from his. Then here comes this Samaritan. Now today we have really cleaned up the word Samaritan. We've cleaned it up. But it would have been a cuss word basically to the Jewish people. They just had no love whatsoever for the Samaritans and the Samaritans for the Jewish folks. And it really had to do with territory (laughs) Uh, more than anything else. It always has something to do with territory it seems like still today. But Samaritans, they believed in the Bible, but only in a small part of it. And they were hated as uh, apostates from the Jews. They weren't real Jews, in other words, to the... uh, uh, um, But this particular Samaritan, and see, Jesus knows this when he's telling the story. And so he shows that a religious leader from the Jewish tradition goes by, and then another one comes by, and they do nothing. But then this hated Samaritan all of a sudden shows up. And gives money uh, to, uh, to help the injured man and, and finds him a place to go to be taken care of. So, who's the hero in the story? Or, as Jesus said, who was the, na- who was the good neighbor? Well, the one who showed compassion, said Jesus. The Samaritan was the one who pleased God. So think about that. The hated Samaritan was a neighbor and a good one. So Jesus said to his followers back then, and then he said to us, says to us today, go and do likewise. The golden rule, the great commandment, no commandment is greater than these. The story by Jesus makes us think, really, and, and, and look at ourselves, doesn't it? Um, this is some really tough teaching, and it comes from the Sermon on the Mount. The, uh, um, this uh, golden rule part, anyway. Um, so it also, if you read that, Jesus makes it even harder when he says, love your enemies. Okay, so think about that Samaritan again, an enemy of the Jewish people. And what did the Samaritan do? Love the Jewish person he hated, Right? Okay, so you, if you make those connections, you can see uh, that Jesus not only, he didn't just say something that could not be done, 
He just he, he showed a spiritual truth. He showed a truth from God, the power of love. Now, if you and I want respect from others, even those that, who we differ from politically, religiously, racially, whatever category we want to, we have to give respect to others. We have to respect other people as persons. We cannot fall into the demonization of people, other people that live in other countries you know, uh, and legal status and what all those other things that I'm seeing everywhere on, on TV and, and, and what during this election season. But we can't do that. We, as Christians, we cannot follow that. We have to follow Jesus and take seriously when he says, love others. And if you want to love others, the first thing you have to do is respect them. If we want to be respected, we need to show respect to others. If we want tolerance and understanding from others, when we make a mistake or we say something not quite what we meant, then we must give that patience and tolerance to other people. Um, if we want appreciation and honor for our point of view based on our life experiences, then we'll give that same appreciation and honor to others. I'm sure I haven't said this really as well as I wanted to, but I hope you get the point and you can fill in with your own examples, but we must seek peace. We must pursue peace with one another. You and I are to be peacemakers. It says that in the, uh, at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. Remember those, what's called the Beatitudes. Blessed and happy are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons and daughters of God, children of God. So here's the frosting on the cake. Humans are wired by God to give back, to give love, to show love, kingdom love, like yeast and, and leaven will spread throughout our community, in our country, in our world, because it's a power from God. So what a concept, what a blessing. The golden rule. Um, love others. As you, and do unto others as you'd have others do to you. Now, in conclusion, as we think about how the golden rule can affect our life in conjunction with love the, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and, and, and mind, and love your neighbors yourself, um, I'm going to go back and give you just, I'm going to end with just some words from a world-renowned Bible scholar William Barclay. Now, I don't think I've been in a church yet that doesn't have some Barclay commentaries. <laughs> They're little blue commentaries. You'll find them just about everywhere. And they were some of the first commentaries I was given 25 years ago or whenever that was when I started doing all of this. And um, um, uh, William Barclay um, was a, um, if I remember, I want to say Scottish, John, but I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to look back. Here's what he said. There... This is probably the most universally famous thing that Jesus ever said. There is something which had never been said before. With this commandment, the Sermon on the Mount reaches its summit. It's a new teaching and a new view of life and life's obligations. Barclay continues, To obey this commandment, a person must become a new person with a new center to his or her life. And if the world was comprised of people who sought to obey this rule, it would be a new world. God is reconciling the world to himself right now. He's been doing this for years. He never stopped creating. He's creating new persons in their lives and in their hearts. Uh, what do we see Paul say? You are a new creation. The old has passed away. The new has come. So don't be afraid of new when it comes to Jesus. New may not be comfortable, but new is good. New life is good, especially when we compare it to the old life that's not working for us, right? Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we've gotten through this day already and... Uh, um, we, we, we've seen your work we, uh, in, in bringing, um, uh, uh, bringing uh, um, L back to consciousness and, and, and we give thanks for 
uh, our, our first responders, and we always want to remember them and, and, and honor them and give you thanks for their, their great work among us. Uh, Lord, be with her, be with us, but mostly plant these commandments in our heart above all other things that we may have learned or know in our Christian life, and I, and I really feel like it will change my life, and I think it will change all of our lives, and all the other things that we see in Scripture just naturally will kind of come together. So, uh, Lord, we just lift all these things up to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. We have a song or no? Yeah, we do. Oh, oh this is good. Through it all. Day. The last two weeks, we've been, our last two months that we've had communion, uh, we've been uh, looking at the uh, Nicene Creed, um, and these all came around about the same time. But this is the one we know, this is the one we, we um, state our beliefs for many, many years, and again, as I've said before, these actually predate the printed Bible. So, there you go. In God, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, and the third day he rose from the dead. He descended into heaven, he descended into the hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So as we come to this time, what we call the Great Thanksgiving, the reason we call this uh, the Great Thanksgiving is uh, this meal, at least in our Methodist circles, uh, has, is sacramental. And it also, um, it is uh, open to all, but uh, also uh, it's call, we call it Eucharist, um, and we usually have. Eucharist means thanksgiving, so that's why we always start off with uh, a great thanksgiving and some other words. But here, first you're going to get an invitation, because as I said before, this is Christ's table. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. God of all creation, let's say this together, God of all creation, you are pure and holy. You created a perfect environment and beautiful beings for your pleasure. All of this was good. Yet today, today we, we find, find ourselves in an, an imperfect, imperfect world, and, and we, we confess, confess that the sin in our own lives separates, separates us from, from your will, will and your and ways. ways. Forgive, Forgive us, Lord, Lord for, making for making choices contrary to your, your purposes, purposes, by refusing to live by your guidance, guidance for, for failing to trust that your ways are in place with our well-being well in mind. Give us the power through your Holy Spirit to turn from our willfulness and trust you alone for our rule of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news, and that is that Jesus uh, died for our sins uh, before we even uh, were aware of us. Uh, in, 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 uh, in Christ, we have forgiveness and redemption of our sins, and God hears us, and God cares and God forgives. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let's practice, and we're going to do this again, Um, and we just do this briefly. Uh, Let's practice God's being God's reconciled people by turning to one of your neighbors and one of your neighbors (laughs) and to offer the peace of Christ to one another as uh, as reckon as a a sign of peace and reconciliation. So you can do that now. So peace of Christ be with you. And the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Crazy. All right. We do have an update, by the way. What? It said there is an update on the LEDs. Okay. Uh, let's, let's just uh, you know, go ahead and do this. Okay. Hey, look. Everybody sat down. Okay. I'm surprised. Um, you did good. You did very good. Um, Anyway, so it's uh, time for our thanks, uh, the great Thanksgiving, like I said. Uh, lift up your hearts and give thanks to God, and God blessed are you, and you, with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death. You raised from the dead this same Jesus who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before uh, uh, meeting with death, Jesus took uh, bread and he lifted it up and he broke it and he gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do, uh, uh, Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was over, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ Christ is is risen, risen, and Christ Christ will will come come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and juice and wine and the things that we have here today that represent them on these gifts and the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this cup that we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the whole world, redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your heavenly table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray as it is on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the the kingdom kingdom and the power power and the the glory glory are yours now now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake in this one loaf. The bread in which we break is the sharing of the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is the sharing of the blood of Jesus Christ. All right, so um, the, um, we'll invite you to come uh, to the altar.
And uh, I think we've got some, uh, yeah, we've got some uh, ushers that will help us do that, or no? Yes, we do. Okay, good. Um, and uh, we'll just have you come, and you come to the rail, and they'll dismiss you by road. What they're going to do is they're going to take you around and come back this way, and they'll bring people to the rail, and then we will, um, we will uh, at that point, um, we'll come serve you. Also, we have uh, gluten-free options if anyone has a uh, need for that. And I know we have at least a couple here today, but if anyone else is in need of that, let me know when we get to you, and I'll uh, come back and get it if I hadn't done that already. So as you are getting ready to come, I'm going to go ahead and serve the, uh, serve the uh, musicians. Yeah, I just did a second ago. There it is right there. If you want some. All right. Body and blood of Christ given for you. Leslie, this is the body of Christ and the blood of Christ which is given up to you. The body of Christ for you, Joyce. And the blood of Christ given for you. Thanks be to God. John, this is the body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ poured out for you. Thanks be to God.
absolutely. Thank you. All right, there is a benediction on the screen, at least benediction to the seal. That we use, because I think it says a lot about what it is that we've just done. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy, holy mystery, mystery in which, in which you, you have given yourself, yourself to us. To us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right. We come now to uh, our time of honoring the um, uh, All Saints Day. And we remember those saints that have gone before us, um, saints that went home to their eternal reward during this year. John will, I'll light a candle, and as I say each name, and uh, John will uh, toll a bell. And again, if there's someone else um, in your life, that you can speak that in your heart as we honor, honor these, this communion of saints. I knew that was going to happen. All right. There it is. And I have to hold it. Pat Cookson, April twelve or April twenty seventh, nineteen thirty five to January eighth, twenty twenty four. Charles Kolb, August 12, 1932, to July 17, 2024. And Nadine Smith, March 8, 1933, to September 11, 2024. O oh God, we give you thanks for all of these saints that have gone before us those who have taught us by words and by example, those who have shown the love of Christ to us and have, uh, are now uh, reside with you in that place that we long to be for that great reunion someday. We give you thanks for them as we name them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Um, notice that I just had to. <laughs> Before I lit Charles, I had to look right over there. That little pew, you know, uh, yeah. Um, now, let's see. Um, Pat would usually be somewhere right in that area, right back there, right behind you all, wouldn't she? Yeah. And we learned this year that I am distantly related to Nadine Smith. Who knew? But I found that out. Um, all right. Um, it's time for our joys and our concerns, and I would say it's a joy that uh, we made it this far Today, what an, what an odd day, but you know what? The Lord is present, and I believe the, word, the Lord can use everything for his glory and his good. What joys is, is there that we want to share in our heart today, or share with everyone today? It's in, on your, yes. Yes. You got joy. What's your joy, John? Good authority means Santa himself. <laughs> All right. And that is a joy. Uh, All right. I have a little bit of an update for you on Elle. She did end up, they, uh, I'm assuming she agreed, even though she was not wanting to, but she is um, on her way probably there already to Missouri Baptist in Sullivan. Uh, Peggy Bowers and her mom, Ivy Jean, went with her. So uh, Peggy was going to contact um, Eleanor's daughter Susan and just kind of update them on what was going on but they said she was you know she was doing good and they when they put her in so as we used to say in the ambulance conscious and alert times three there you go (laughs) and also uh, as a joy to Kim Kinder who was right on the right on the money taking care of her 
um, when, when she went down. All I saw was Ramona do this, and I thought, oh, John's going to be mad at her because she moved when they were singing. So yeah, <laughs> I thought that myself. How much trouble have I been in for that? And then I looked at Bailey, and Bailey's looking at her, and Bailey's got this look on her face, and I'm like, what's that about? And then I look over to the left. Yeah. yeah. So, so thank you. And, and also to everybody else who was up here on, on the altar with her, Bruce and, and Cindy with the fan and everybody else, I think that was quite helpful. Yeah. So what that means is that we were ready. Even though we weren't ready, we were ready. I mean, it, it presented itself, and we were ready, and... Uh, I'm glad she's getting the care that she needs right now, and so we continue to lift up Elle, and it is a joy that she, um, that she did wake up and that she's doing better, so we're thankful for that. Any joys, other joys that we, yeah. I'm going to brag a little bit. My granddaughter Jacqueline was uh, initiated into the Junior Honor Society this weekend. She was very worried that she wasn't going to make it, and she did. She did, okay. So we're very proud of her. Okay. Since I have a, uh, uh, one of my uh, kids present, I won't say anything about any of them. <laughs> Just know they're a joy to me, and I, I'm not even going to look at them because I don't want to embarrass anybody. Because I remember when mom would say, hey, Todd's here. That's my joy. He hadn't been to church in several years, so, you know, and everybody clap, you know. Anyway, uh, it is a joy um, to, uh, to have everybody here this morning. Uh, what concerns might we have that we want to lift up today? Other, we'll continue to pray for Elle and others. Any concerns? Yes? Judy. Okay, Sarah's mom, Judy, uh, could use some prayer today, so we'll uh, lift her up today. All right. Any others? Okay. I know what some might be thinking. I'm, I got prayers. I ain't saying that. We've already been here long enough, so I'm not going to bring that up. No, I'm just kidding. It's a, sorry, that, that didn't go well, did it? Um, it's a preacher joke, you know. Sometimes we... All right, moving on. Uh, hey, we've got to laugh sometimes, right? I mean, it's been kind of a heavy morning, so I'm just really happy that, uh, that we can... Uh, we can move on. All right. So now what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to take a cleansing breath, and all of us, I think, and then we just take a moment of silence and listen for the still, small voice of God to speak to us this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We come before you today. Um, it's a humbling experience when we have days like this. It reminds us that so many things that we think are so important in our lives and we just have to do this or we have to do that or we have to watch this or call this person or we just, whatever, we, whatever we've put placed in importance this day, nothing is more important than sacred life that you give each one of us. And when we see someone in distress like we saw Elle this morning, it gives us pause. And we think, you know, I'm not going to be here forever. And so instead of it being a lament, Lord, can it be with a sense of thanksgiving and joy knowing that we don't know when our time will come to leave this earth, but we'll give you thanks for this day, today, and tomorrow for tomorrow. And we'll take, take life one step at a time, one breath at a time, and try not to get out too far ahead, 
because that's when worries and problems start. When we, when our brains take us on a journey trying to solve all the world's problems when we really just need to think of our, think of you and and bring our problems to you. So we bring those to you today, not just our problems, we bring our joys, we give our thanksgivings. And, and, and Lord, we just ask that you um, help us to look again at the wonderful opportunities that you give us. We place our needs and schedules before you, um, and before our service to you. Help us to reorder our priorities today. Heal our wounded souls. Bring us to the light of your love once again. And let us love you truly with our whole heart, with our whole soul, our mind, and our strength. Give us courage and perseverance and persistence as disciples that your great love and glory may shine through our deeds of loving kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we pray for the offering that um, has been placed as you came in uh, or can be placed in one of the... uh, boxes as you leave. Lord, thank you for the many gifts that you give us. Um, Those are blessings, and you ask us to manage your resources that you give us. And so today we give back a portion that you've asked us to do, and we put this in your hands, and we ask that you would use these gifts for the furtherance of your kingdom, for your glory, and for the salvation of all. In Christ we pray. Amen. If you'll please remain standing for our sending hymn, My Hope is Built. And this is our prayer today. Let's sing this as a prayer. as we go from this place remember this week is a great week to practice loving one another as uh, as you would love yourself and to uh, treat others it really is in ultimate importance to God how we treat each other it's important so let's do it well in the name of Christ go in peace amen, amen.